Have you ever been called a pig? I bet you weren't too happy about it. And why would you be? Pigs are associated with the adjectives fat, filthy, and feeble-minded. So being called a pig rarely comes across as a compliment. But how many of us have actually had the privilege of getting to know a pig? In actuality, pigs are naturally lean until we started domesticating them for food. Pigs are fattened to yield more product for us, the consumers, to satisfy our insatiable appetite for pork. And with pork being the most widely consumed animal protein in the world, the overfeeding continues. From Porky Pig to Piglet to Peppa Pig, pigs have always been depicted as pink mammals. But pigs aren't actually pink. According to research, the pink skin that is prominent in farms is a result of artificial selection, which meant that human farmers from a long time ago decided to continuously breed pigs with the same DNA mutation, which would allow their skin to be different from the rest of the majority of the other wild ones. Suffice to say, we made them pink. As far as being filthy goes, that is also a misconception. If given enough space, pigs will never excrete anywhere near their sleeping and eating areas. They're clean animals. They prefer bathing in fresh water than mud. And pigs don't just wallow in mud for no reason. They do this to cool their bodies down, to avoid sunstroke, because pigs do not have sweat glands, which makes them incapable of sweating. So the expression, sweating like a pig, has completely nothing to do with pigs. But arguably, the most important of these conjured stereotypes is the one where people believe pigs are dumb. But this is far from the truth. Studies have shown that pigs are remarkably clever. They have good memories, a great sense of direction, and are highly trainable. You'd be surprised to know that pigs can even learn to play joystick-based video games with their snouts. According to Professor Donald Broom of Cambridge University Veterinary School, pigs have the cognitive ability to become quite sophisticated, even more so than dogs, and certainly three-year-olds. So, we ask ourselves, how did pigs end up with this reputation? Why have pigs lived through all this judgment without anyone thinking that the misconceptions were false? The answer is because we allowed it to happen. Most of the grossly negative traits that we link to pigs today are more about adaptation rather than natural instinct. But by combining popular belief and what we believe we know, we have conceived these stereotypes. And because it doesn't concern us, we never bother to seek out the truth. The reality is, all of us have been victims of stereotyping, and all of us are equally guilty of stereotyping others. Every day we stereotype, from the positive to the negative, and from the subtle to the absolutely ludicrous. We do it because it's convenient. It makes life easier when we can just categorize people and combine them into a few groups. That way, we can predict how they're going to act and how we are supposed to respond. Every day we act on instincts. It allows us to respond at a pace necessary to keep up with our modern lives. But it also never gives us enough time to stop and reconsider. So we end up living our lives based on preconceived perceptions which ultimately lead us to the wrong kind of interaction and reaction. Take Miss Piggy for example. From what you've heard and seen, she is the ultimate diva, full of a feminine charm whose flirtatious love affair with Kermit seems to dominate her life. But 
Do you know of her struggles growing up in small town Iowa with a single parent? How many of us know that she was forced to enter beauty pageants in order to survive? Every time we meet someone and capitalize on the meager amounts of information we know about them to satisfy our hunger for having a notion of who they are, we deny them an honest chance to present themselves and we miss out on opportunities that have potential in bringing sincere relationships. When our true interest of wanting to acquaint ourselves is coupled with an open mind, that's when we stop stereotypes from sabotaging our path to positive relationships. So, I hope that the next time you see an eyeglass-wearing Asian kid like me, don't just assume that he's a nerd because he could very well be the Wilbur that you have yet to know.